One, two, three. It ain't about your bitching or your devil's tongue. Just to wish that I was still the one. This time we did something a little bit different than last album as we went in and we actually took a handful of songs that we knew we were going to have drums on and they took the first six and we did some pre-production which we've never done in the past. So we had at least three jams where we really flushed those songs out and flushed the arrangements out. But I got you in my veins, in my blood. Well this is actually the first record, believe it or not, that we've actually pre-produced. So we were able to kind of really, from the beginning, get a sense of scope, not only of each individual song, but of potentially what the whole album is going to look like. Just kind of jamming it out, messing with arrangements, making sure the tempo's right, that kind of stuff, to really get a really good rhythm track. Ultimately, it's all about the vocal, and as long as that the rhythm track gives a good foundation for the vocal, and then all the other elements kind of just are there to fill the gaps, I think that's the most important, and tempo has a lot to do with that. And so that first session where we all came in was surprisingly easy, when a lot of the time it takes time and effort to figure out what, what it could be or what it should be, and it's more on the fly, and we actually did a lot of that prior to. So what if, um, you know how we do, the, we start to walk down, bah, 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 bah. No, off the A minor, right? So it's yeah. What if there we kind of go through those two walks rocking and then when he starts singing, maybe, no, no, And then kind of again. They only get one heart to fill before it's through. Keep going. And then we play through this chorus till the end. Bruce Whitkin and Ryan Dorn are co-producers and engineers. Bruce is, a, is more of the idea man, the, the musical side of things. And Ryan is more of the engineer, as well as produces takes. He's the one on the console listening, making sure that you're getting the right take or you're hitting the right vocal part. He's getting performances out of you. Matt has been with me since the beginning, since I moved from San Francisco, and moved down to Southern California. He's been my drummer for 12 years. Um, kind of the highs and lows of that. I mean, he's an amazing drummer. I think he's one of the best drummers, definitely, I think, the best drummer for me, and one of the best drummers technically and dynamically than anybody I've ever seen. I always try to keep it as simple as possible, just break it down to the basics that support it and lift it at the same time. If you start showing off or playing little things that are just, you know, musician-y, it shows, and it's, it's not part of the song. I kind of just try to think more from my gut and not from my head. I just listen basically, and whatever comes out, I try to just let it come out naturally. We're just so in tune with each other because we've been playing for so long. And from the onset, it's been a, a really amazing musical working relationship, you know. All right, girls, let's go. One, two, three, four. I don't know what time it is. This has been the first time that we've had Bruce exclusively sitting in and playing bass. It's great to have one of the producers in the room 
I mean, it's so accessible. He's not in another room, he's on another thing, and he's playing bass, he's part of the magic, or he's part of what's happening. When we first met Jake, he had a band, so we cut the first record primarily, I believe, with the core band, and then I added some guitar and stuff like that. On this record, his bass player moved on, and I had played bass on a few tracks in the past, so it was just like a natural fit. To flush out arrangements, or just for me to bounce off something, say, what if we do a stop here? Or he says, well, what, or what if we prolong that section? It just seems to move things much quicker. But ultimately, it's just, I mean, he's an amazing bass player. It's inspiring and fun to be in the room with him. When you're working with any artist, you want to make the best version of that artist's record. You never want to make your version of that artist's record. So I will always make a suggestion, but it's only a suggestion. It's never a, a demand. And sometimes with songwriters or any you know, artists, when they're so into it and so deep in, you make a little suggestion here or there and it, it opens it up. Jake is a very, I guess the word is mercurial kind of guy. Sometimes he'll come in, you know, with an idea or, or some kind of granular concept. Other times he'll come in with a song that's totally fleshed out, you know. It's taken a couple of records to actually gain the trust, in essence, of the artist. Jake is very much a hands-on artist. You know, he has strong opinions, strong beliefs. So with a personality type like that, you really have to be sensitive to, you know, a myriad of things. You know, you don't want to step on any toes, but yet you got to raise your hand and do what's best for the song. To me, it's all about feeling. So if the song has a good feeling, you're in good shape, and then you just don't want the listener to get bored, so you bring it down in a section or bring it up or try and do something that's not obvious, you know what I mean? Or stock. In songs and in recording, the space is almost as important as everything going on and everything at once. It's those dynamics, you know, the peaks and valleys of songs that you have to breathe before you can hit the big part. You know, the beauty of that, of after figuring out what the arrangement is, is figuring out what you need lyrically and how to push the story along or, or make the song work in that allotted amount of time. It's always a, a, a fun moment when we lock in the arrangements, figure out what I need to write to make it be something that's worth listening to. First little dry run, kids. Dry run. Dry run. Very cool. We recorded that. Yes, we did.